Alleluia. I saw a very powerful vision this morning. Just woke up from sleep, minding my business. I wasn't even praying, wasn't doing anything. And all of a sudden, I didn't even know I was in a vision. I stepped into a very magnificent auditorium. Very, listen, magnificent auditorium. And when I entered that auditorium, it was like I was outside and I was inside at the same time. And it was like the Lord was causing me to pass through. And I saw many faces here that I know. But the thing was not the auditorium. The entire, the garments that people were wearing was pure gold. Pure gold. Crystal gold. Listen. I was amazed because it's not just the kind of gold that you see. Pure gold. I saw people that I knew in the physical were even struggling in my mind. I said, what are these people doing with gold? Pure gold. Nobody was even concerned about the gold. People were just worshipping God. Some were lying down. But I saw pure gold. Listen, immediately I saw that. Then when I returned from that vision, I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? You see, let me tell you. Gold in scripture is associated with glory and royalty and wealth. When God begins to speak like this, it is his revelation about your destiny and what he's determined to do. Now, there is no guarantee that because it was seen, you will get there. Are we together now? Honestly speaking, it was only when I came back to myself that I believed it was a vision. When I, I'm talking of splendor, gold, I understand what the Bible says that silver can become dust. There is a level. I, I, have you seen a level where nobody is a beggar? Nobody is. It's not like somebody competing with another. How much is your rapper? People, and the, I noticed this in the vision. People were not even concerned about, you know, all these things that people think about. It was extreme worship. A magnificent auditorium. Thousands of people. Flags of nations and people were worshiping. Let me tell you. If the mouth of the Lord declares this, his spirit will make it happen. Hmm. We have grown up in environments that have cultured us into believing we will never amount to anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are largely victims of the programmings and the limitations of our environment. So when God utters a word in his majesty, I hope you know that every man speaks according to his ability. If a little boy says, I will buy you a car, you don't say amen. Because you know that the child may have desire, but there's no ability. Before God speaks or shows something, he searches whether he can make it happen. So if at all he declares anything, it's up to us to believe. Can we turn this vision I just saw into a prayer for yourself? And say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have revealed your desire for me. I will step into it. Splendor. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign, and we shall reign. It didn't say we shall struggle and we shall reign and we shall reign. It says that they who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. He said they shall reign. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I began challenging us last week about a mystery that God showed me you see, one of the 
one of the blessings of the apostolic office in fact it's not just a blessing it is also the proof is that you are committed a certain dimension of spiritual reality aside from spiritual governance you are granted access to a dimension of spiritual reality and god allows you and mandates you to communicate that reality to the territory you have been assigned to. that if you sustain the humility to listen to any man that god has committed these two things happen to you number one illumination is granted unto you number two the capacity he says as many as received him even unto them that believed in his name he gave them the power to become when you believe it and you receive it then power is released to become that experience hallelujah and so i have taught us again that in this kingdom dominion is a product of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom this is what we call the word of god the word of god is many things but primarily a compendium of the thoughts of god comes from the word logos the logos of god the thoughts of a man carefully calculated thoughts an extension of that word word means the mindset of a man are we together now so when you study the word of god you are accessing the mindset of god the wisdom of god and the bible says let this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 he says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was an understanding there was a comprehension in the christ that granted him access to all of the possibilities that were produced and the bible says that if that mind is in you it can cause you regardless of what limitation to produce that result hallelujah this bible was given to us as a gift holy men the bible says wrote as they were inspired of the spirit now the bible in itself theologically speaking still contains the imperfection of the writers and the imperfection of the interpreters and some of the errors that have happened as a result of translation from year to year you see obvious um limitations things that were added that should not be added and things that were not added that should be added but regardless of the limitation the word of god is still intact the word of god is not 66 books no 66 books are the vehicles that are used to communicate the word of god are we together now if all you have in your lifetime is one chapter of the bible you can access the word of god through it it is not just in reading genesis to revelations that you access the word of god that vastness is given as a symbol of god's mercy and grace so that regardless of how you come what angle you come you will still access the word of god you have to understand what i'm saying there are people who may never have the privilege of holding 66 books in their hands yet they can have access to the word of god the word of god is not the reading of the book for there are different alterations to different bible versions i don't want to go into all those theological debates there are many books that are, are argued whether it should be added to the book or not and and people argue as it will not it will not change the word of god the word of god is eternal are we together now so it doesn't matter what error in interpretation that's too small a reason to alter the word of god the bible says the word of god liveth and abideth forever liveth and abideth forever are we together now when you encounter the lord jesus christ at salvation scripture tells us that we are born of the word born of the word 
born of the word but much more than being born of the word the holy spirit when he comes into the life of a believer his primary assignment is to begin to open the truths of god's word jesus was speaking john 15 john 16 he began to talk to us about the ministry of the holy spirit when you read john 16 and verse 12 it was it was it was said that he, when he comes he will guide us the holy spirit guides you he is the spirit of truth but he he will guide you into all truth he will coordinate your understanding to ensure that you are not in error hallelujah listen the quality of my life and your life is dependent on the word of god but not just the word of god alone i shared it last week remember our access to it first then our ability to engage the word this word of god issue is a very serious issue two scriptures all said the same thing deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3 We are talking about a life and death issue, brothers and sisters. We are not talking about something that you can live without. It says, and he humbled them. Afterwards, go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and all of that and all of that so that he might make you know that what? Man! does not live by bread only but by every word how many every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the lord doth man live that means both the quality and the quantity of your life listen is dependent on the word of god when jesus came Give us Matthew chapter 4, please, and verse 4. Satan was attempting to tempt Jesus, and here was his reply. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That means the cure for the death that happens in anyone's life, whether sickness destiny career is the cure is in the mouth the word of god the word of god you hear people talk about the word of god but many believers have not given the kind of attention that is required to produce the results they desire the word of god man so we are talking about an issue of life and death here that if a man in his lifetime does not access the word of god he will die both spiritually and physically the secret to the mysteries of god is in his word the secret to the multifaceted dimensions of god's possibilities is hidden in his word the secret to a life of wealth and prosperity is hidden in the word of God the secret for restoration just like the worship team beautifully sang the word of God the secret to breaking the bands of witchcraft and wickedness is hidden in the word of God but you see believers pay very little attention to the word of God and there is a reason for that it's not just that they do not want to pay attention to the word of God we preachers have not been able to demonstrate the potency of the word of God we will rather sit from morning till night in people's offices begging them than to stand and access the word of God we will rather bribe and do all kinds of things and cut corner it is because we have not been taught the potency of the word of God and its ability to change everything the word of God is reliable the word of God is dependable the word of God is worthy of your trust and your commitment please don't forget this the word of God is reliable the word of God is faithful it would deliver as promised
if I ask you to see me tomorrow and I will buy you lunch the first thing you do is to gauge whether I am reliable whether I am trustable and whether or not I have the ability to be able to provide you lunch so when you think and say lunch uh, no matter what you should be able to afford it then you believe me is that true everything brothers and sisters declared by the word of god for your destiny is doable by the word the word of god is not a scam the word of god is not some fraud some trickster the word of god is not a religious system of indoctrination that just makes men identify with a deity so there are many of them and you choose the one that is most reliable no the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. Listen carefully. Heaven and earth will pass away. It says, but the word of God remains eternal. I do not trust anything that is not built upon the word. I don't care how solid it looks. You are watching a mirage. It will evaporate. The vicissitudes of life will force it to move away. Are we together? It says that he that heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken to a man that built his house on a rock. It's, the issue is not the house. The issue is what it was built on. Brothers and sisters, our lives are in a big risk because we are building our lives on visions. We are building our life on emotions. Building our lives on uncle, connection, degrees. Building our lives on on lottery building our lives on business building our lives on money building our lives on intelligence that's a risk it's the same thing as sitting in a car and driving backward with your eyes closed how safe is that yet the risk we are taking by ignoring the word of god is worse than that and we do it every day for some it's been so all their life my assignment is to bring you to a point where you appreciate the invincibility of the word of god my assignment is to indoctrinate you to bring you to a point where you are you become one experientially with the word that your life is built upon the word brothers and sisters i give you a guarantee you will never fail i don't want to know what is happening in your life you will never fail hallelujah John chapter 1 and verse 1 the Bible says John in his gospel was teaching he said in the beginning when your uncle was not there listen carefully when the university was not there when no business idea was there when no seminar was there in the beginning When there was no customer in the beginning where there was no producer in the beginning where there was no lecturer it says in the beginning was the word the word is ancient in the beginning was the word and the word as a person was with god and the word himself was god verse 2 says that the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. It says how many things? Please talk to me. How many things? All things were made by. Now when the Bible tells you all things were made by the word. You should pay attention. Because that means everything that is a vacuum in your life can be made by the word. Your finances can be made by the word. It's not there. The word is what will make it. The ministry can be made by the word. The home can be made by the word. In the beginning was the word. He said all things were made by him. And without him. Ha, this is a revelation already. Was not anything made that was made. That means if it ever appeared. The word of God made it happen. This for me. Is healing from every fear. This is healing from every envy because the bible says nothing ever appears until the word of god births it brothers and sisters if you ever see a human being on earth the womb of a woman produced it 
it is not the womb and something else it is the womb alone even if machines are constructed it is in the similitude of the womb the womb is the authorized channel for reproducing another human being the word is the authorized channel for making things appear and without him all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen the bible never said all things were made and will never be made again the creative potency of the word is still intact the word is still making destinies the word is still making wealthy people the word is still bringing people to the place of the anointing all things were made by him all things the bible says he upholds all things please listen he upholds all things by the word of his power he upholds all things by the word of his power the word of god is a matter of life and death the word of god is not the issue of christianity the word of god is not the issue of a preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's child listen the word of god there are many people business people who claim that they don't need to know anything about the world all they need is just idea and connection there are many students all they need is to be able to read and cram there are several people in life who have not yet seen the need for the word in their lives that you preach the word does not mean you have received it you are just being a nice man of god it doesn't mean you're a believer a believer is not one who preaches the word a believer is one who the word of God has entered him preaching the word does not mean you believe the word I know many people who say many things that are not their convictions including books that have been written first Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 in his epistle peter is teaching us something first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 first peter help us media chapter 1 and verse 23 it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which does what liveth and abideth forever no uncle abides forever no system abides forever history and archaeology chronicles many kingdoms that have risen and fallen many systems of government that have risen and fallen but the bible says the word of god liveth and abideth forever the word of god is the only way to commit god to the affairs of your life the word of god is not one of the ways it is the only way an individual a believer can commit God to the affairs of his life you ignore the word of God you will pity yourself and just become emotional believing that God is in the affairs of your life many of we young men are trying to build our lives without the word of God with our pride and arrogance believing that we can believe we can build our lives many people are building homes without the word of god many people are building financial destinies without the word of god when you talk about the word of god they don't exactly refuse it they just they are passive about it they have not seen how to engage it god's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God please write it down God's Word is a compendium God's Word is a compendium of all not some all the possibilities that are resident in God God's Word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God There are many things that the word of God can do. A number of them, not all of them, 
a number of them were chronicled in this bible the 66 books are a representation just a sample of what god can do the bible does not give the picture of all he can do with the stories the stories are finite the power of god is infinite meaning that if the bible were to be written continually there are more things that we'll see about god the bible says many miracles jesus did which were not recorded in this scripture but this has been written because it is enough to make us believe hallelujah the bible is a compendium of all the possibilities in this bible impossible situations were turned around in this bible sick people were healed in this bible god took people from the dung hill in this bible farmers became prophets in this bible prostitutes became the great grandmothers of jesus in this bible god turned around families in this bible money failed and god turned the economic situation not of individuals of nations in this bible men lost things and received it back in this bible god stepped in miraculously in this bible angels fought for men so that when you see it you can have a, a consolation that the word of god is reliable are we together the word of god is dependable the word of god is trustable you can throw your life to it i believe the word of god with all my heart i will be foolish today to ever say i do not believe the word of god but the missing link for many people is that they do not know that the word of god does not work automatically let's walk this thing now this is where the foundation of many believers confusion comes somehow they believe that if the word of god is powerful and potent it should be able to work regardless of my impute that thing i believe with all my heart is a doctrine of demons the bible says that the spirit speaketh expressly that in the end times many shall come and be deceived and they shall give heed to strange doctrines and that includes the doctrines of demons one of it is the misconception of the operation of the word this is what i want to drum into your spirit the operation of the word how the word works hallelujah the word of god does not work automatically it was jesus himself that taught us in the parable that a man the man was good the seed which was the word of god was good the bible says that he planted all kinds of seeds some fell by the wayside some on thorns is that true some on a rocky ground and some on good soil very good word accurate seed but there were some soils that made the word of god not to produce to the extent that birds were able to come and carry the seed they were not afraid they ate it listen to jesus's own interpretation he said that the seeds that fell by the wayside are those that immediately they hear he says satan comes satan is not afraid of the word satan is afraid of your understanding and you're engaging it don't you ever make a mistake of lying to yourself that just because you have the word of god the devil will run away have you forgotten that he was lucifer the light bearer satan was the custodian of the mysteries of god it was his office in heaven satan does not fear the word brothers and sisters when satan came to jesus he used it is written good student of the word satan is never ever your access to the word does not scare the devil it is your understanding and the capacity to release your faith to it that's what paralyzes the gates of hell that you have a word of healing does not mean you will be healed 
that you have a word of prosperity does not mean you will prosper that you have a word of prophecy over your life does not even mean that things will be all right is God helping us tonight please I beg you in the name of Jesus I want you to listen to me if you listen to what I'm teaching you I promise you for some of you it will be a matter of days you will watch things turn around in your life this thing works it's just that we are engaging it inaccurately that's why it's not producing the desired results the word of God does not work automatically no sir they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them if you do not profit in business what happens to you you lose there's nothing like neutral so if the word of God does not profit a man it means on account of that word he can lose some things yes it is the word the correct word Jonah carried a word from God entered a boat with the word made people to lose everything with the word in him because the word was wrongly engaged the word was from Nineveh and he carried a correct word and ran against God and people suffered that you are holding the word of God and handling it wrongly may even be the reason why certain things are not going well hmm. are we together if Moses never had an encounter with God he would have been spared but Moses saw certain dimensions of the word and God would not tolerate certain things from him and said, no, Moses, your level of encounter with me should not allow this unbelief. You are not entering the promised land, period. If he was blind, he would have entered quietly. The word does not work automatically many believers in the body of Christ this is what we have been taught the moment come doctor the moment you find the word believe it confess it go and sleep hey. listen I'm putting my hand on my head because it's worth lamenting I am I am a confess of the word listen 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 this is a system Go and buy rice, buy fish, buy oil, drop everything, heat your pot and go and sit down. Talk to me ladies. That sounds to me like rice. Well prepared rice. No sir. While you are in the parlor, keep rejoicing that your food is getting ready. You are doing the right thing. But after a very wrong approach are you seeing that now this is what many of us have done we just get a scripture in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says I shall lend to nations I will borrow that's correct but incomplete correct but incomplete the precepts of the kingdom is line upon line you don't jump steps and choose the one you like and say God let it cover the rest no sir you are having the readiness to judge disobedience only when your obedience is complete. That means your obedience can be incomplete. It is obedience, but it is not complete. Are we together? Yeah. Planes have crashed because the pilot did everything right and missed one or two steps. Have you seen people have accidents because they just slept? The, the car was going well the fuel but they missed a step and that led to a ghastly motor accident that took the lives of many listen to me nobody will build a destiny just by saying because I have seen the word of God and just jumped around it it won't work that way I want to show you tonight how to engage the word I started last week I want to show you the operation how does this thing work the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see I love everybody but I don't listen to everybody I love everybody I am open to learn 
but I have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results I want to get. I don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what I believed yesterday. I want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that I attain something very tangible. I've always shared it. It's like taking lectures everywhere. Will you be awarded a degree at the end of it? Today you go to medicine, next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts and then next tomorrow you just go to PG block and just stand by the door and attend anything. You are writing. After many years, you have been engaging randomly. It is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding along the path of a field. This is how it is. Many of us are not in ignorance of what we want, but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome. This brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people. You will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if God does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters God is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of God compels him to action The darkness, the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light. Wonderful, sympathetic to that environment. But until the word of God came, nothing changed. Hallelujah. Engaging the word of God. <clears throat> Scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light. Listen. The entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple. The entrance, not the reading, not the recitation, not the quoting, not the watching. The entrance, there is an activity of the word. When it enters into your spirit, truly, the Bible says it can give light. And then dependent on your state, it can graduate from light to understanding. Are we together now? That's what the Bible says would happen to us. And if we understand how the word of God works, then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another. The laws of God. Listen to me. The laws of God are a representation of his love and his justice. You have to understand this. Don't let the laws of God irritate you. They are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory. Thank you. James chapter 1. We are reading from verse 22 to 25. James chapter 1. Apostle James is teaching us now. James chapter 1. But be ye doers of the word. Everyone say doers of the word. And not hearers only. Then he says if you are a hearer only, what are you doing to yourself? Deceiving yourselves. To 25. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What is it called? The law that liberates men. The law of liberty. That when you access it, it can set you free from any bondage. And continueth therein he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work what will that man have this man whoever he is 
shall be blessed in his deed if something is happening to my results I must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working the mechanic steps back and says okay let's array a number of problems that might be wrong maybe the gear system maybe the ignition maybe the battery and he begins to check and then later he, ah i see where the problem is and then he fixes it if he gets it right the car responds immediately if he gets it wrong that car can be grounded forever the problem is not the car it was designed to work there are times you need to change mechanic you just say thank you sir you have been struggling around this car for a very long time i appreciate your effort and then you go to someone who can help you understand this while he's fixing it you're just watching him and hoping he's right the most important thing is the result is the mechanic you are waiting for sometimes he will tell you go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time is god speaking to us our family members every one of us we take the bible and quote it and quote it and jump around and mock ourselves before situations and circumstances and hope we are right brothers and sisters let's sit down and examine this thing our, our results are showing that something is wrong i don't know about you but i'm a very honest person at least to myself when a thing is not working i don't lie that it's working i go back to the drawing board there's got to be a way shakata bakataya i cry for the spirit of revelation there's got to be a way lord there is a way out there is a way out open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation you were you were authorized by god to guide me there is the truth somewhere and i begin to search like an archaeology boom the light comes when light comes then darkness goes and goes forever Pray in one minute, Lord, show me what I'm not doing right. Show me what I'm not doing right. I take responsibility. I would have been healed by now. There is something I'm not getting. I'm missing a step for sure. What is closing the doors of favor over my life? Why does this sickness leave and come back? Why, why, why do people help me today and hate me tomorrow? why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow there is something i do not know why do i see the power of god move mightily in a meeting today and then tomorrow it's as if i was not the one who god used yesterday why do i preach powerfully today and then tomorrow i turn around and it's as if i'm barren of utterance what am i missing oh god show me these systems why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing because the word of god lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable lord i'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no i humble myself i mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where i'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where i'm missing it that's the place where satan has capitalized on my result let god be true and every man a liar let god be true and joshua selman a liar god cannot lie 
something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where i am god cannot lie god cannot lie god does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and Abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10% of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you are a madman you're, there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when Jesus saw madmen read your Bible every madman Jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it number one <laughs> number one we do not engage the word with understanding the first reason why the word of god seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us but not based on understanding in all thy getting get understanding in all your sowing so with understanding in all your praying pray with understanding in all your serving serve with understanding in all your dancing dance with understanding the bible says whatever it is that you get have an understanding of what you are doing that's the first reason why the word of god seems important the second reason is that the word of god is not engaged at all the word of god may be believed it may even be received but it's not engaged the word of god is not engaged at all we leave the responsibility of engaging the word to god and let me tell you where this mistake came from 
it is in not knowing that the grace of God like wisdom and like love are multifaceted everybody say multifaceted there are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted the Bible talks about the height the depth of love like wisdom too, the depth the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do so the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe the report and confess the lordship of jesus the moment you do that the bible says you are saved for with the heart this is how this operation works for with the heart man believes unto righteousness romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works now there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do you do but the strength for doing is supplied by the spirit are we together now the bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 I believe and verse 20 it says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think above that who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking you I'm doing the thinking I'm doing the asking but I am doing it according to an ability that is working in me in me jesus sent the 72 go you go and do the teaching but there is a grace that follows you these signs will follow you you move and then it follows you now the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say for my finance all i do is to believe and speak and it settles it no sir it doesn't settle it read your bible Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe do and observe do and observe all that is written how many all all that is written all that if you do not just hear not just speak do according to to all that the Lord commands not according to the way you want then it lists a number of promises that the Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you then it begins to list them there is a doing listen when your doing is by human strength that's what we call works when your doing is by divine strength it's called partnership in any case there is a doing it is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh that's what is called works of the law when your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to god's command is called partnership is what great men of god will call covenant the obedience that binds you and commits you to god Please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all. So here's how it works. Come. This is a promise by God. Emeka, I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful. I am going to make you such an anointed man. See from scripture. This is my destiny for you. This is God speaking. Now it is left for a mecca to understand what is going to be my approach he can say wow what a great destiny lord are you not powerful who am i weak human being like me when we arrive just let me know and he goes back that's exactly the kind of believer satan wants because he comes and says look look 
if God is mighty why does he need to be assisted you see how Satan plays with our minds he said God he does not need your assistance and he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility and we step back and say Lord I just confess and leave everything and God says no no right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition why didn't he sit down and speak and say after all the father had declared he came died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today is seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the bible talks about having a lot of zeal but that their zeal is not according to knowledge or we are not engaging at all many of us are allowing god father this is how we pray look up father i pray help my life you see that kind of thing it looks like a very honest prayer just because you are crying father help my life look at my family lord are you not looking at my father what is i'm reading that you are a merciful god what is all this nonsense oh god then you apologize and get back again okay lord i'm, I'm serious what i'm trying to say is can, will you not step into my family and god says look there is an ordinance i bound myself by my own word are we together now and then our parents just sit down and say oh god have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony i guarantee you if you are one of them i show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what sir isaac newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move i must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains this is how your finances will stand and remain this is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes ah in jesus name i beg just go and then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep and then after that you just get up and it doesn't bother you you couldn't sleep in the night but once it's morning we forget the things that are behind those kinds of people will never rise so how does the word how does god himself prescribe that we operate the word let me show you number one the first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture the first thing is to believe that god is alive and he's mighty all this searching of the bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto god hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a god no matter what you search in the bible is subjective you will doubt one day paul said i know whom i have believed it's not the believing i know the person i believe and i am persuaded in his ability i am persuaded before you start searching scripture for your health for your finance for your life do you believe in the reality of god now this is where the ministry of the holy spirit comes because it is the spirit of god that makes jesus real to believers miracles do not make jesus real listen to me the disciples saw many people rise from the dead have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles 
yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers peter went on evangelism he was part of those who returned but when he stood he doubted the disciples ran away so the first thing is an encounter an encounter with god the foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that god is alive and number two that he is mighty and able you have to settle that otherwise your journey to exploring the word of god is a waste many religions teach all kinds of things about jesus christ and about god and even in the christian faith there are all kinds of disturbing variations and understandings about god there are people who believe that god is not really god he's just one of the many deities so the adim is an all-inclusive thought about god that god the name god is like a man with so many dimensions and jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions if that's what you believe the word will not profit you you see that yes number two when your conviction is settled now listen carefully number two is that there must be a searching the bible says for everyone that seeketh find that there must be a searching you don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything all keys don't open any door there are specific keys for specific doors are we together now yes you cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage except if the holy ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there but you just stand oh and he was alone and you just quote it and say lord i, I, I at least is the bible bible is bible no sir no sir all this humanist point of view that keep punishing us you have to find the accurate word the key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom the key to your bedroom does not open your car the key to your car does not open the safe of a bank they all require keys but you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern and where you do not know those scriptures follow those who have conquered in that area they have conquered by the word you see how it is so this lady is walking for instance in tremendous dimensions of the anointing and i'm trusting god now i believe god wants to anoint me i'm tired of my church struggling sick people not being healed and i search around i'm in ignorance and i just find out okay the holy ghost shall come upon you lord i receive but nothing is working it means i have to explore it is for this reason that he gave on to some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you and open up that mystery all you do is just read the holy ghost shall come upon you lord i believe now the holy ghost is upon me and you get up you are seeing that nothing is working that's to tell you there is more than that thing you read every time the obvious does not produce result go prophetic immediately it means there is there is a deeper understanding every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire there must be a prophetic interpretation so i access her materials and i sit with the holy spirit and then i trust him to begin to open me up now listen 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 when you begin to study the bible and meditate upon it you need time and you need concentration two things that we lack in this our distracted generation time and concentration you can't be cooking and trying to access revelation you quickly the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you you run and then while you are trying to off the gas you return back you won't continue where you left you will start afresh again it's like worship 
when you finish worshiping and they take light you hope that they bring it fast if you don't bring that light after 30 minutes don't think they just bring it and you continue no somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone time and concentration let me tell you this many believers are distracted it's a strategy of satan you are studying your bible and playing computer game satan yes sir satan i didn't say satan made the game satan created that system to distract you studying your bible and making a long call then what did you say i'm still on it no no sir no sir study great men how does god reveal these things to them when there was a need for revelation daniel said oh king don't worry just give us time daniel was not loitering around in the silence then the secret was revealed then the secret was revealed there are some of us who believe that because you are always around people it's a sign that you are a famous person let me advise you you may not be very great if your entire life is corporate you must understand the power of a private life are we together it's good to have a corporate fellowship it's good to be with your husband your wife your children but there are times listen certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone even demons work like that there are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone there are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone i want you to learn this these things i'm teaching you are, are the ways god has opened me up to revelation you need conviction then you need to search out let me take one area that is very obvious for us let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity for instance things are not working in your life things are not working in your family let me tell you what many of us say oh god i've been crying about this employment issue it won't you wipe my tears and give me a job be very honest is it a job that is going to solve your problem i'm not saying a job is bad but you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom not a job you don't make money off job you don't make money off business you make money off understanding are we together now yes and so the person just says well lord i thank you and then you believe that things will change or your health you are trusting god the devil is afflicting your body afflicting your body and you are happy here and there you just quote some scriptures in jesus name by his stripes i am healed and then that settles it you won't get healed that way i want you to study the bible i i got a very powerful revelation from bishop david oetico that I, I mean it did something to my life in a way that i cannot begin to explain do you know that satan is very particular about two things sickness and poverty they are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed sickness and what poverty he doesn't mind you being brilliant that's all right if he struggles to hold you and you refuse he will let you be but your body and your finances he fought the body of moses he fought the well-being of israel in egypt listen to me these are the two areas that when you want to break free it's not just quoting scripture there will be warfare are you are you, are you hear what i'm saying warfare that you want to walk in divine health whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness look at all the people who were healed in the bible they were not casual thou son of david have mercy was passing the woman with the issue of blood eh, madam please don't embarrass us you are, you, are, you are joking shouted until jesus responded the blind guy at the pool of Siloam. what of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside said we can negotiate with the owner of this house the same money that fixes the roof we spend 10 times it in the hospital when it comes to your health it's going to be more than recitation trust me it will be warfare because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth satan will fight it with cancer he will fight it with anything he can fight look at young people now having um what they call this thing blood pressure blood pressure 
last born and he has blood pressure everybody is taking care of him yet he still has high blood pressure are we together yes that's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue it's a demon it's a demon don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress doctors well done i love all of you but believe me just hear what i'm telling you it will not be just because of stress it's a spirit a wicked spirit from hell hell had enlarged itself releasing all kinds of strange demons i pray for people and i look at certain sicknesses i know that this has to be a demon praise the lord they say you are sick but you find out that is when you are praying all kinds of objects you can't see it all but you are feeling it move from your leg to your stomach to your chest then it stops there and very soon they say ah you have a breast a, 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 a lump on your breast that devil is a liar that is a spirit it's not just some kind of I say you ate too much starch no sir no sir before we knew anything about nutrition people were dying in the Bible every time they died and food killed them they said there was death in the pot they didn't say there was sickness it's the spirit of death do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes then by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is God speaking to us and then finance the demon of finance is even the worst one because I've seen that one myself let me tell you why it is bad it is Satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God sir poverty will keep you farer from God than a blessed life take it from me when you stand and see an empty plate before you you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are you are thinking steal it are we together you know we don't tell ourselves the truth in church we lie to ourselves is that true is that not what is making parents to push children you have to go and marry so 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 this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if god has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of god do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering as the account in the finance department they write a check a blank check they quickly put their names there and pocket it poverty the ladies that sleep with big men do they sleep with poor men please answer me how much does the poor man have is it not a big man somewhere that promises them that i will change your life when you are there and your ends have not met then you don't know where dinner will come from yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue there are people now some of you students school is about to resume and the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from so when you say let's pray the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself it's a spirit how many men of god stopped loving god and stopped being serious you can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting any knock on the door will distract you no matter what god is saying these are strategies of the enemy please i if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe nice car you are carnal this thing is warfare this is the destiny of the saints you are talking about bless you darling are we together how many graduates now 
as soon as they graduate they just say lord i want to spend one year with you and they just say daddy i just decided to take one year for a retreat and your father will say come home as if he wants to give you money when you sit down you say what did you say are you are you an idiot it was with my pension i was running your your school you are staying one year to see god that means i'm not a christian you better go and look for work your uncle was talking the other day and the lord is telling you consecrate one year to know me for the destiny i'm showing you but pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no you find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day you say i want to leave society says you better don't leave hunger will kill you Hi. may god raise a generation of people that will access these things you know years ago i listened to our father in the lord bishop oyedeko and as he said these things passionately people criticized him they still do and all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry i don't want to sit down serving god thinking about money imagine if i was thinking about my daily bread i now prophesy to you and say sam see me after service God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, specially see me, you, see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it let me tell you prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life yes sir yes sir i can sit down spend time worshiping bless your people oh god not come and say you are joining the queue where's the envelope you are holding you, you can imagine that kind of thing so it's not every man of god you see doing these things that are bad they have not understood how to engage this is what i'm trying to bail you from are we together do you know how to command results or are you aware that results can be commanded do you know how to command it or are you aware brothers and sisters if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death do you know how to come out or do you hope you will come out There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock i watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things i've learned with satan is that you see pride and fear are power twins that satan brings to your life to disturb you on one side you are afraid but on another side there is tremendous arrogance so they will not learn when i find somebody who has an understanding in an area i don't i will not argue no matter what i don't understand about what he's saying i give his revelation a chance there are very broke people who will sit down and analyze every pastor listen to a message and say this is not correct look at the person talking are we together there are many people who have never prophesied they have never seen anything and they will tell you hear god alone don't listen to a man of god the person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of god nobody needs to prophesy to your life forget about just to do this and and for this cause many are weak there are many people just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for but they can stay for 10 years they've done everything well but one thing is needful and they've missed it are we together don't criticize what you don't understand let your heart be open to say lord speak to me It is the doers of the word that commit God not the hearers not the readers not the watchers not the listeners the practitioners of the word this ministry by the grace of God Almighty 
is where it is by the grace of God not because of the intelligence of a man Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result Rabbi Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do this this result is not in the realm of men no man can do this except God be with him let's review two areas for tonight is that all right let's review two areas of our lives two areas of our lives let me pick one our spiritual lives and then our finances let's pick these two areas how do we rise by the revelation of the word let's start with our spiritual life some of you think i'll start with money listen first your spiritual life hallelujah spiritual life <laughs> if i ask you how do we grow spiritually what are you going to tell me i read my bible and i pray every day question have you not been doing it have you been growing <laughs> are we together there are many liars in church we just open the bible in the morning and read anywhere we are just come is the purpose of reading the bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual they just open any scripture and abraham did this then they open another one the lord will perfect all that concerns you then they pray lord i thank you today is blessed i speak to this day and then they come out and their lives are messed up and after many years they don't grow brothers and sisters that's not how we grow in the kingdom you never grow just by looking at a bible and mumbling words take it from me no you don't grow that way not in the anointing not in the knowledge of god I want to show you how to grow because people can grow let me tell you the first key to growth write it down Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter this is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom Jeremiah chapter 29 please give it to us and verse 13 13 13 13 Jeremiah 29 read it with me one to read uh-huh uh-huh the last three words please one to read one more time one more time you see these three words that is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God it says and ye will seek me many are doing it but you will only find me when you search for me with everything everything brothers and sisters your motif and your hunger for god vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer it vetoes your study of bible and your reading of books there are many of those who wrote the bible they work in zondavan they work in white taker house the publishing companies but they are not born again printing the bible and walking around it does not bring growth there is a depth of hunger read your bible everyone who found god in the bible searched for him with everything not a casual pastoral search not a woman of god mama search uh -uh. not a businessman theoretical search not an academician search ye shall seek me hear what david said a man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks reading the bible does not mean you pant after god it may just mean you are not yet employed so you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy brothers and sisters there is one thing i know if you must remain in the faith you need an encounter with god an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter i promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still
are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an an unbelievable deviation of convictions you did not encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with god that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of god meet god an encounter is where those who are desperate for him they say oh god as a matter of life and death that is the place where he washes you that is the place where he builds you you don't have an encounter you will never grow spiritually we can flatter ourselves listen the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth there is a big deception sweeping the body of christ and thank god i walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe i'm just talking listen i can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace the anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth it is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office if that anointing comes on a handkerchief it will produce the same result handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives listen that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they will be healed after 10 days find out whether he will still do it again it's gone because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you're like this is is this thing is it that these people don't believe what they say i've seen music artists that when you see them service is going on they are at the back of the church gisting taking sugar cane eating biscuit they now say it's time for elijah to come and minister and then just cleans his mouth and comes and after five minutes you see people rolling on the floor and you finish you say my god elijah no sir no sir god does not judge you based on the gift in your office it's based on how much you pursued him seekers of his presence you can study the bible out of competition to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions you can study the bible out of just to make sure you have sermons i know pastors and that's wonderful i teach it too there are pastors that have a sermon for every topic all they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip what are we talking about now uh the axe head will flow together ah, i remember 2004 i preached a message like that just dust it add a and b are we blessed the starting point of your spiritual life is to trust god for a hunger that can last your lifetime hmm. i will give up ministry a thousand times some of you don't like what i'm saying because i said i'll talk about money too you better listen to what i'm telling you because this is this is what will make money not kill you i want you to ask the lord he will tell you there is nothing in this life nothing in this life that i cannot give god ask him there is nothing that is the measure of your love for god the measure of your love for god is not sung when you say you love this lady she says sir i've not eaten i say sorry they just called me at the police station you are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension i'm showing you how these things work spiritually 
what you see God do in my life today I submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting is because God knows that anything he gives me is his own ah, my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen I'm showing you where we are missing it although we are still studying the Bible how many pastors move around oh my member my choir my this and God says all right so you pay the bills you 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 decorate everything you bring members by yourself how many churches put pressure on their people go and bring five souls otherwise you pastor will look at you and say I saw three please 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 John Wesley said set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you born where the carcasses are brothers and sisters that's where the eagle will come there are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning the key is not to go and call them the key is to keep burning my heart belongs to you my life belongs to you when i go to pray he is lord of my prayer I don't just go -da 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 -da, as if I'm a fool, as if you are, you are, you are chanting a, a charm. I approach God like one who is totally dependent on Him. He is the Lord of my prayer life. Many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy. So when we do it and someone is watching you, you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior. No, sir. This is not how spiritual things work above the mercy seat below the cherubims there i will meet with you there is a meeting place and i i am desperate for you hey help that lady and i This is how it works in the kingdom. And not I'm desperate for you. Listen, man of God, let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you. Because every time you think power, you think conference, you think of a plane flying you around every time you think god you think honorarium every time you think god you think man of god you imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying this is apostle and god says you know way you first try hundred days and god says in spite of it and ye shall seek me and only find me and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches oh, one is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him it's a privilege to lead this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter Encounter is not sitting down and no. It is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment. There were people who would lock gone at the days when people lock themselves from morning till night. Now, when people lock themselves to pray, it is oh God, give me a wife. 
oh god give me a husband i'm not saying these things are wrong oh god give me this oh god i must graduate oh god i must get a job service what is all this nonsense and ye shall seek me please god is not a joker let me tell you if all of you does not seek him forget about it there are ladies seeking god only to prepare themselves for ministry no you won't find god that way if at any point you find yourself using god just know that you and the anointing you and glory you are far please hear what i'm telling you i i never started hold on i never started my work with god knowing i will even be a preacher one one gentleman came here i think some months ago with documents from his ministry well articulated and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a... i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me take all of me take all of me use all of me use all of me I lay my everything take my everything I release my everything take my everything say take all of me all of me Lord Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place I'm not a musician this this is what happens when you want to grow Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences but brothers and sisters these men were seekers of God there was a prophetess called Anna the Bible says she stayed in the temple stayed in the temple since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple listen preachers we are the ones to blame first leave members alone we don't have any encounter ourselves we just come up and dress well that you are preaching right does not mean it's releasing life the life is from your secret place not the greek not the hebrew hear me the life is from your secret place he said the word is like a double-edged sword that sword that enters the spirits of men you can't fake it listen honestly speaking we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God we know how to preach we know how to sing we know how to produce albums we know how to write books but to seek his face where you are fasting not because you want power you are saying Lord show me more of you reveal yourself to me I remember those days in the night those of you in vet vet a uh, faculty of um, what they call it now vet there is a place one of the neglected places I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night I will be there till morning crying and saying Lord I've created a place where no one can distract us reveal yourself I wasn't looking for power reveal yourself right now what happens in the church is just an 
is just a galore of talent galore of talent I am this I read this I know this I dress like this no sir that's why we have lost the power of God in the body of Christ as we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with God Lord I rehand my life again take all of me all of me Lord hey, use all of me all of me Lord take all of me all of me Lord I give all of me all of me Listen, the Bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the Bible says she came before God with her treasure a representation of her all let me show you how to get the heart of God other people were coming with all their we know that Moses said this and he said this is not what I'm looking for but here comes a woman the Bible says she came with sparking out pure nard, one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before God the king poured it the Bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give God your heart and take finance you can give God finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school Please hear what I'm saying. Especially for we the young people. Don't let anyone fool you that working with God does not pay. No. You want to do business with God? There is, the price is death, not morning devotion. The price for encounter is death, not eight hours prayers. That's too small. Giving God eight hours of your time will not give him all of you. You need to give him everything. Everything. Not eight hours. You want to see the glory of God in your life and your meetings? You can fast dry for 90 days. You will not see anything. You want to see demons crying out as you minister? Brothers and sisters, it's not running around to look for a man of God. You, a man cannot impart his secret place. No, sir impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation one of the most deceptive thing happening in the body of Christ now is this craze for impartation people just write the names of five or ten men of God around that they think are anointed and divide seats like a business and hop from one location to the other touch me and then they snap I, I, I got impartation from this Hey, Jimmy, please. I got impartation for wealth. Apostle, I got impartation for this. Prophet, this, give me your own. Then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings. You are joking. You think God is that cheap? He said, Many are called, though, but few are chosen. Gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone like roommate and you hear people groaning and crying before god in the night now people snort their way till morning a pastor a preacher oh god anything that will take your presence from my life may it not come 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 ministry i would give it up a thousand times money marriage children a thousand a million times listen those of you here who god has called into ministry or you are going into ministry please let me give you a loving caution be careful be careful who you follow matters be careful there is a path there is a path 
that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death you show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for God people follow your hunger not your talk while you are talking people are watching you and they will find out is it true that this person hungers after God brothers and sisters I have met preachers in my life who preach what I call a boring message but the presence of God that left them left me going back to cry and say from whence cometh this man which depth where did this what did this person touch that's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke crusade I didn't go there to hear revelation I was already preaching I was already working in miracles I went to hear a man who knew God he talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it let's return back to the secret place let's return back to retreats it's a language we are not used to again learn to off your phone no please learn to source especially now that is December don't enter do you know why we end koinonia we have just one more service and we are done that one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before just go back and say ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it Christmas holiday it's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves I can't wait to finish the last service where I know that I have time no more counseling no more ministrations and let me lock myself and cry and roll before the God of my salvation not looking for power for next year not looking for prophetic word for next year I don't get the prophetic word by searching I get the prophetic word by worshiping God and the visions he begins to open to me to the year and he tells me there are people who have come here now and as they are listening to me they are waiting to hear something a revelation oh Greek logos and then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship gentlemen I shipped something from somewhere we will keep mocking ourselves with this thing you don't fake presence when you carry the presence of God it is palpable 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 something happened i don't know when when which of the days now it was i was alone and someone came to see me and i wasn't even out here the person just sat down i went in and all of a sudden i came and saw the person shaking like a leaf shaking like a leaf and i looked i said my god do you know why because you can make your house a habitation of angels all kinds of things happen there all kinds You don't just become spiritual when you fast. The key, the key, please hear me. The key to knowing God is death, not prayer, not Bible study, death. A sacrifice of your all until you die. The word of God now becomes alive in you. Until you die, the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can't bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say i've gotten to the throne i wish i can go through this death for you it is one thing i know that you cannot pass through as a group listen to my message knowing god experientially there are some of us the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons they are the constraints that God must subject you through to cause you to know him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, until I walked there, I never knew that I can fear no evil. We live in a generation that binds everything. We don't have discernment to know whether it is of God, whether it is a furnace that God is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually. A pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him anything you see that is not favorable to your senses you cast it and many of us have casted the realms from which power will come there are people who god will say all of you go for work gone are the days where people hear god like this 
and somebody says you are for you two years you are with me no work for you and everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you and saying this your stupid man of god has turned your head upside down and you feel that pain and it is in that pain you know something about god we don't have experiences that make us know god we are full of theory there is no scar in us that are testaments of encounter you don't know god by theory people are in a rush to go to for ministry some of us when god called us he took his grace to push us so because we felt so unqualified in ourselves we knew it was not the issue of intellect is god speaking to you I remember those days when we traveled for crusade it was not the boosting of a man of god's ego people looked forward to encounters encounters with the power of god never embarrassed by our failures right now you see people keep their ego on the line and explain all kinds of things if someone prayed for the sick and he did he was not healed you may not see that person for the next three days not because the person is not because his tongue is ego it's a revelation that you must know more and the person will unlock himself lord there's got to be more but right now pastor lays hands on 90 people 90 people don't get healed and he says well at least we had a successful intellectually sound meeting will i ever be that kind of preacher do you have time for god i know you have a bible I know you pray but do you have time for God show me the book where you record his voice show me the encounters show me the personal vigils that you do personal vigils not group vigils where you dominate everything and pray everything alone I remember one of our friends who was spending time with God I would never forget I came around Chapel of Redemption there he was in the rain it was raining Yet he was on the floor there. That rain started and finished on him. Right now, little discomfort and we are angry. Nah, little dialogue. No. I can't go to her church. My shirt is not properly ironed. They will think I am a child. That's somebody who doesn't love God. The Holy Spirit is saying, lie down before me. I want to impart something you turn around. ah this lady that i like this other one who respects me my son is here my daughter is here death that's why we fight i am apostle joshua selman not brother joshua selman fight that's a sign that you are alive in yourself please in one minute if i'm unable to continue no problem i'd like you to be honest i want us to repent this night let's take five minutes i don't know what position you will assume worship just set the atmosphere for us with the simba play the strings i want to hear that sound of the strings i give you five minutes with your makeup please i like you to cry your heart to jesus the king of kings and the lord of lords i want you to be honest Take all of me Let his glory come upon you. 
Bandera na Mariana na Macena na Mar Cena Macena na Malania na Mar Lord afresh 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 Fresh encounters, fresh encounters. Leda basena na masena na le da 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 she da da le da da le da da. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire No one else will do For nothing else can take your place Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes To feel the warmth of your grace Help me find a way would you bring me back to you? Hey, hey, hey. You're all I want. Shere masena masana na biya na na he na na he na na he na 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 na. Just pray one prayer and say, Father, everything in my life that has risen above you, I bring it under the feet of Jesus now. Pray. Some of us is relationship. Some of us is business. Some of us is career. Some of us is ministry. Don't be ashamed tonight. Some of us is our reputation, beauty, looks, clothes, eloquence, degree, academic certifications. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. It is this lack of secret place that makes us to begin to lose character. Are we together? It is this lack of secret place. You didn't used to be an angry person, but now everything annoys you. Are we together? Yes. Now everything moves you. Women, men, money, power. You didn't used to bother whether they call you pastor, promise or promise. 
but something happened to you once they don't put past up you almost kill let me be honest with you there are many people who are in the motions but the wine has finished the wine has finished the wine has finished Lord may may this ministry never lose relevance may the wine never finish let it never be oh God that a day will come when your power will not move just because men have hindered you let it never be oh God that a day will come where Joshua Selman will be full of himself and will never give you right of way Lord we rededicate this ministry I rededicate my life we rededicate everything to you we lay our golden crowns break our pride Lord if there is anything we have achieved that is responsible for any trace of pride take it away we are rounding up take it away talk to the Lord Lord take away my pride mention everything that must leave you go ahead and pray take away the lust take away the pride pray take away the the um, what do we call it prayerlessness wordlessness Oh, 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 Bible says thou shall have no other gods thou shall have no other gods thou shall have no other gods I like you to pray and say Lord any idol any idol any idol bring it down lift your voice and pray Keep praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to start tonight by appreciating us for the sacrifice of fasting. There is no gift of fasting. Hallelujah. There's no such thing in the Bible as the gift of fasting. Fasting has always been a sacrifice so it's that there's there's no such it's not it's not it's not anything unusual when you are tired there is no gift of fasting fasting is not abstinence from food fasting is abstinence from food to seek the Lord if you are not seeking the Lord you are not fasting hallelujah most times people just stay away from food and go around gisting sleeping gossiping allowing the devil to use them that's not fasting fasting is abstaining from food to seek the seeking part is the difference between fasting and just maybe some sort of diet control or whatever it is are we together now the idea is not to starve yourself you see you have to understand this the idea is not starvation it was on account of food a man gave away his destiny he says i prefer to eat 
than to have my destiny what is it in my destiny let me exchange that destiny for food called Esau in the Bible he was not clothes he said I am so hungry to hell with my destiny bring me that pottage of red steel and his destiny went away many people laugh at Esau but that's what we do all our lives we allow food to take away the place of an encounter that can change your life forever there is no one on earth i know no one who truly works in authentic power with god who does not fast not just as a ritual what food is to your sustenance is what fasting is to your spiritual growth nobody outgrows food nobody you can't say i've been eating for 40 years are we together now so i need us to be at the same pace so that we don't think it's just a starvation remember in the book of acts 23 don't turn there there were certain people who went to consult diviners on what to do with paul and the bible says they bound themselves with a curse and they said we will neither eat nor drink until paul dies fasting so that an anointed man of god can die are we together now so we need to understand that this that god is doing is to empower us so that we can rise in life it's a sacrifice that god has designed for our lifting even jesus himself fasted and jesus was teaching and say when you fast not if you fast and when God declares a corporate fast, there are individual fasts, but there is a corporate fast. That is a commanded fast. Is this not the kind of fast I have commanded? You can do the one you want to do, but when God commands it, it's because there is something that he has in mind. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated for a while. Just pray one prayer lord jesus open my eyes open my eyes to the understanding of your word open my eyes please pray make sure you are praying open my eyes open my eyes Oh, 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 chapter 19 tonight i'm sharing on the power of knowledge the power of knowledge luke chapter 19 in the new testament jesus cried twice the first reason why he cried listen carefully the first reason why jesus cried was when he was weeping at lazarus's grave and the bible records that oh how he loved him so love was one of the first reasons why jesus cried the second reason why he cried is found in luke chapter 19 from verse 41 luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 blessed be the name of the lord luke chapter 19 verse 41 and when he was come near he beheld the city listen carefully and wept over it saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hidden from thy eyes jesus stood over a city and was weeping he was watching the way the people were guessing their lives 
and jesus your jesus started crying and his reason for crying is that if you had known the things that are responsible for your peace responsible for your peace not just the, uh, the quietness responsible for your results jesus stood and was crying and his his purpose of crying was the ignorance of the people in that city and the inevitable fact that they would continue to be victims of that ignorance he says you do not know the things that belong for your peace he says but now they are hidden from your eyes meaning that although you are looking you cannot see them this kingdom we have been drumming it from day one of this fast that this kingdom is a kingdom of information is a kingdom of light dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge not desire knowledge not intention knowledge hallelujah dominion in this kingdom is not just based on knowledge but based on sufficient knowledge having knowledge is not enough when a student goes to write exams the student is not writing another subject if he gets seven over hundred is that true he failed 93 percent and passed seven percent but the seven percent is not enough to pass the student so having knowledge is not enough there is a level of knowledge it takes for dominion to be true if the light goes off right now and you light a matchbox it is light but it is not sufficient enough to turn the night in this auditorium today so saying you have knowledge is not enough the knowledge must be sufficient to a degree that can bring you the result you desire the problem for many of us is not necessarily ignorance it is insufficient knowledge is God speaking to us mm. we need deep enough knowledge not just knowledge deep enough knowledge about finances deep enough knowledge about divine health deep enough knowledge about the anointing deep enough knowledge about church growth deep enough knowledge about increase having knowledge is not enough it is true that we know some things but the challenge is those things may not hold all the keys that are required to command the results that we desire let me show you a verse that i found very very interesting first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 this blessed me in no small way first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to that means the proof that you are knowledgeable is that there is a desire in you for more that the moment there is a point in your life where you believe that you know enough the apostle is speaking that by the spirit that a sense of arrival and complacency is a symptom of insufficient knowledge sinat sang that the more i know you the more i want to know you so when you encounter god when you encounter the spirit of knowledge and revelation the sign is that although you are working in great results they remain a hunger in you for more i am passionate about knowing the areas of ignorance in my life because there is so much i do not know are we together everything we desire in the kingdom is available the grace of god has made it available but it takes knowledge not just faith faith must be upon an, a person and an information that is correct you can have faith in error you can have faith in an information that is not correct so it's not just having faith the object of your faith must be authentic you need a high level of insight and light a high level of insight 
a high level of light are we together scattered in this auditorium and all around and all those following us from the nations of the world the reason listen carefully the reason why we have requests why we have desires is because there are expectations before us that are not yet our testimonies there are expectations before us there are things we desire some of you are here tonight trusting god for superior dimensions of the anointing some of you here are pastors you are struggling with membership up today down tomorrow and it's not that you are not anointed but not to the degree to get the result you desire there are people who are trusting god for certain levels of graces but you see the thing is not just to say i have knowledge is it to the degree that can give you the result i always liken knowledge i also liken the anointing to money if i want to take this this bottle of water and it is 100 naira if i have 70 naira i have money but not the value enough to purchase this this is what i am looking for so i must upgrade that value to the level that it can deliver this result are we together knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet of God was speaking by the spirit and he said, my people, he never said the hidden, my people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Satan manipulated their understanding to make them see life from a perspective and the result of that aberration is the pain and the discomfort that they have. Knowledge. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance, not just prayer. I told you that not all spirits go by prayer. The Bible never said so. This kind, there is a kind that goes by prayer. There is a kind that goes by prayer and fasting. There is a kind that goes by knowledge. The devourer does not go by fasting. The devourer does not go by knowledge. The devourer goes by obedience to, a, obedience to a correct information. Are we together? I believe in fasting. I believe in prayer. That's what we are doing now. But I'll be lying to you. Many believers keep mocking themselves, thinking just because you are praying and dissipating energy, it will cover for every spiritual predicament. No, sir. At best, God will take advantage of your alignment in prayer to lead you back to an information that is able to help you. In this kingdom, we reign on the strength of the light that we have. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. For as long as it is night time in your life, weeping continues. The Bible says weeping endureth for the night. You don't stop crying just because you are tired of crying. You stop crying because light enough to turn your night to day. We are calling this place night now simply because something has happened to the sun in as much as we know. And we are not able to receive that illumination sufficient enough to turn the night to day. But a few hours now into the morning, everything is going to change we rise in this kingdom by light not desire i desire prosperity is not enough to give you i desire to walk in divine health i desire for that hepatitis to go i desire for that cancer to go i desire for that hiv that fibro to leave my body i desire for that barren womb to take in it takes knowledge it takes knowledge not just desire hallelujah you hear the testimonies of the people who god is granting them grace don't you think god just chose to bless them now it is now the knowledge has come to them and so it makes it look like this is the season god has wanted to bless you he's always wanted to do it but you only arise and shine when your light comes not when it's available it has always been available but the day it comes to you every lady's womb in this auditorium can take seed but it doesn't make you pregnant automatically the day a real seed enters that womb then the process of conception starts are we together but as you are now seated that womb can produce 
so it's not enough to just say i have potentials i know what can happen no if god wants to change your life he grants you knowledge every religion that oppresses men in the world thrives through mysticism and ignorance the strength of victimization and oppression is withholding classified information from people the difference between the intelligence unit of the american nation and other nations of the world is their access to classified information there is a kind of information that is not given to the third world nations to know it is only supplied to them if they go and plead with the intelligence unit and then they give them terms is that true as terrible as terrorism is on earth right from space there is a system of watching on earth real time but that information will not be given to you is the privilege of the holders of that information that's why they are called world powers they are not called world powers because they are bigger they are called world powers because they have access to classified information so we reign in this kingdom not just because of how macho we are not just because of how fluent we are but the access to the information the bible says jesus himself knew what to do that's dominion to know what to do good master what must i do to be saved in other words i want to be saved but it's not yet my experience and i know that the bridge between me and that result is knowledge good master what must i do not just that i desire to be saved good master what must i do to be blessed financially what must i do to be lifted what must i do to rise to a realm where my body no longer hosts sickness i shared with us a revelation i don't know which of the days that the bible says when a spirit leaves a man remember a spirit does not leave a man on his own it is casted is that true out of that person in my name ye shall cast out devils they don't want to go but an anointing compels them to leave and then the bible says they go through desert regions listen carefully and something about the desert does something to that spirit and without any prayer warrior praying the spirit leaves the desert and prefers to come back to the man hmm. the desert that something can happen in a desert no prayer meeting going on no fasting going on a spirit can be so uncomfortable in the desert and it will rather return back to the man that means there is something the body of man can become that can make spirits even without any man praying they will leave and that mystery you see in the desert is what the bible calls the mystery of fire this fire you see is a mystery there is something about the heat of the desert physically that does something to spirits and they prefer that's why when jesus casted them they entered the swine straight into the water straight into the water and the people drove him and said leave this place when a spirit leaves a man there is something about the habitation of a mortal man that is conducive for a spirit and the moment it leaves it it goes through desert regions and something happens not compatible to their design and he says i have to leave this area of hostility so the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire that when a man becomes a flame of fire no spirit no charm no no cause by themselves you will have a dream and watch certain things leave you the first thing that happened to samson they bound his hand and the bible says when the hand of the lord came upon him suddenly heat from nowhere turned that thing the bible says it was like flax and all of a sudden he let it go are we together we must be deeply passionate about spiritual knowledge not useless knowledge there are all kinds of knowledge on earth occultism can give you knowledge about the spirit realm that's why jesus said i am the door the authorized system for routing this knowledge you can read all kinds of books online 
and that's why we have to be careful especially for we young people because in our appetite to chase knowledge we have found ourselves dappling into occultic there are books that moses wrote but those books are occultic books your real moses he wrote those books before he encountered god he wrote them as a very good student who was trained in egypt today they use those books for occultism he teaches you geometry how to align yourself to certain angles on the earth that will make you be in touch with the constellations moses taught it so when we talk of knowledge we are not just talking of a random pursuit of anything that is spiritual in this day and age where we measure respect for ministry by how much what we supposedly call debt we must be careful the proof of knowledge is the deliverance that it brings that's why many people keep growing supposedly in revelation and with all that rema the devil oppresses you as if that he's telling you i'm not aware whatever it is you are celebrating i'm not aware true knowledge liberates we pride ourselves with useless knowledge that is incapable of standing the test of time and bringing the victory that we desire stood over the city and wept and said you do not know the things that belong for your peace hallelujah let me show you something psalms 45 and verse 4 psalm 45 thank you jesus it says and in thy majesty right prosperously because of what truth not just meekness not just all of these things and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things right prosperously not because of desire because of truth it says and ye shall know the truth and if it is really the truth you can know what you think is the truth you can know what a pastor tells you is the truth you can know what a denomination tells you is the truth but if it is really the truth the bible says it makes men free there are supposed truths in the body of christ that don't make men free ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth acquiring things that puff us up knowledge that puffs up doesn't heal doesn't deliver doesn't bless doesn't make people closer to god There is power in knowledge. There is power in knowledge. There is power when knowledge is applied. We reign in this kingdom by the mysteries that we know. But the manifestation, the potency of those truths are brought to the scene when we act. The first thing to do is to get knowledge, not to act. The first thing to do is to build conviction through the requisite knowledge that will bring you the result. This Bible you see is a compendium of all kinds of knowledge that scatter across different subject matters. So the assignment of the believer is to walk as though you are walking through a garden and find the details that are responsible in this book is the knowledge that will take anybody from a failure to a success it's true in this book your assignment is to walk with the spirit of god are we together to be able to piece together all the required information not some not as much as you want all the required information in this world there is a system where men can walk in divine health it is true it is true now if your experience has not captured that reality it does not mean the word of god lied it is that you have not been able to construct in your spirit and your mind all the keys that are required to produce that outcome you can give me the ingredients to make fried rice and miss one important ingredient and what i will produce will not be called fried rice yes rice but not fried rice 
the difference between jollof rice and fried rice is combination rice is there in all of them are we together now yes there's a lot of ignorance in the body of christ there is a lot of cramming scripture there is a lot of quoting scripture there is a lot of devotionals there are a lot of translations of the bible there are so many books but there is very little knowledge that is required because if that knowledge translates to wisdom it will be justified by the children that it will produce hallelujah i don't want the kind of knowledge that puffs me up into pride you know knowledge can do something to you if you are not careful it can bring you to a sense of pride open to john chapter 4 verse you just ah he's going to verse 17 but the person who is talking there is not spiritual he's not god fearing he's under oppression he's sick as he's talking there and broke on top yet the person is telling you i know you are going to verse 17 that's ex the exact kind of knowledge satan needs so he he deceives you into being convinced that you are also a colleague in the realm of results whereas your life is not producing anything i know everything about getting people filled with the holy ghost i can go to acts chapter one yes i know isaiah 28 i know joel chapter two here is a gentleman in need of the baptism and you stand and struggle around there and create all kinds of flimsy excuses i know what the bible says concerning prosperity oh malachi chapter 3 bring ye all the tithes oh you know luke chapter 6 i know for my sake he became poor show me the result show me in your mind and show me in your life how god anointed jesus is it that one i know it i i can even tell you the amplified version and we think that just because we gather those things we have knowledge no sir no sir we must be passionate about knowledge just because they made you a bible study leader in your church does not mean you are knowledgeable you are just the one who is representing the church and that's wonderful continue doing what you are doing but if it is results you are looking for you have to go back it's not a bible study manual that makes you knowledgeable demons don't have respect for those things i'm not against them but i'm saying much more than those things you have to go and sit down martha was running up and down he said martha martha you were worried and 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 um offended about many things he said one thing is needful to sit down at the master's feet lord what is this secret to favor what is it not i know there is favor most of the results we want we believe it exists but how to make it our experience is where the challenge is and that's one of the benefits of fasting ultimately your faith rises but the bible says the kind of fast i have commanded your light will break forth there is something about the supremacy that your spirit man will gain over your flesh because your flesh has been starved of food and the strength of the flesh is the availability of food when the flesh is energetic it runs around and plays games but when there is the absence of food it has a way of forcing suppression to your flesh and then your spirit man can hear and understand then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth and your health speedily your health physical health hallelujah only if that our loved ones knew certain truths look at me look at all of us now in this place brothers and sisters look at the knowledge that god has granted us access to imagine what have you had certain revelations and immediately you almost start crying because you wish somebody you love so much think how many times you watch sincere people sincere christians become victims of the oppression of darkness through knowledge shall the just be delivered it takes knowledge to prosper it doesn't just take God to prosper it takes knowledge it takes knowledge to walk in the anointing there must be a desperate desire in your heart and my heart to pant after knowledge to pant after truth 
he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house i know that that place is bethel the place of bread where there is knowledge i rather be than to go around celebrating please hear me those who are standing by the roadside and inside all the overflows right where you are standing the difference between you and any man you admire whether in business in ministry in 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 finances family life whatever it is is knowledge when a man fights with his wife and beats his wife it's not just the presence of demons the demons don't just act anyhow the demons take advantage of the ignorance are we together demons don't just act they don't just veto your will and act they take advantage of the gap in knowledge or the incompleteness of your knowledge and then they take advantage of it it is more dangerous to have incomplete knowledge it's better to have complete ignorance because the days of our ignorance god overlooks god can overlook certain things like you see a little child doing certain things and you are aware that that child does not have an ability to have that knowledge at that level and so you forbear if a small child comes and is rolling here now and playing around we may just guide the child in love but not to flog the child because at that level we expect that to happen but if as an adult you come and you are doing it we will first find out whether it's the holy ghost making you do it and if we find out it's not the one we will send you away and we'll say no 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 you don't do this there is order in the house of god are we together mm. if you say you have been born again that you are in christ you have access to the spirit of god then certain things should be seen in your life that validates the fact that you are walking with the word that validates the fact that you are not just reading your bible in the morning just as a ritual to say be a witness you see me doing my devotion today that's not knowledge it can be religion in fact most times it is religion open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things open down my eyes open down my eyes he said call on to me and i will answer and i will show you not tell you show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things great and mighty dimensions of the anointing that you do not know great and mighty dimensions of influence that you do not know let me tell you this anybody in your life you see with sustainable results in any area do not make a mistake of thinking it is luck are we together now there is no luck in this equation when you see a mother train 11 children and for 30 years those children have remained in a way a manner that even shocks you don't just say Kai, madam you are lucky or what kind of anointing is on you no it's not just the anointing god can give you the same anointing on that woman and you won't be able to train one child with it that anointing functions well through knowledge knowledge gives the anointing efficiency knowledge gives the anointing efficiency the anointing does not just work anyhow knowledge gives the anointing efficiency otherwise there would not be need for the renewal of the mind knowledge gives the anointing efficiency you are still anointed but he said let this mind be in you which was in christ jesus hallelujah have you seen a man maybe an old elderly man that didn't have the privilege to go to school didn't have the privilege to learn english but a greatly anointed man you can see that that man utilized less than on a scale of one to ten less than four of that anointing take that same anointing don't change it the same anointing put it on another young man who is more knowledgeable and more vast in scripture that's when you will see the true potential of what that anointing could do that means that old man's lack of knowledge limited the operation of the anointing that's what happened to some of our parents the old people who were prophets they loved god they had dangerous prophetic graces but there was no accurate understanding of the word so the dispensing of their prophetic looks so limited 
but then you take the same prophetic anointing and you put on someone who is mighty in scripture and you see the kind of miracles and deliverances that will come for people knowledge is important in this kingdom you pay for your ignorance it will not be paid for you will pay for it in this kingdom you will pay for your ignorance you will pay for it in sickness you will pay for it in untimely death you will pay for it in lack of joy you will pay for it in sorrow you will pay for it in all kinds of diseases darkness continues to multiply but it takes those who have light light sufficient to keep the kind of results they desire is God speaking to us we are going to pray but the cry is for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge lord give me knowledge why is our family like this we are 20 in the, the entire family but nobody rises you know i watch how i talk to people many times sometimes here on the queue and then around as i travel and they meet me and communicate certain challenges and in all honesty and with all humility i know what they are doing wrong that is responsible for that and i know what they need to do to get the result and then they say apostle pray for me i know just a touch from you as soon as you touch me everything will go and it is true that they can get some measure of results but ultimately they need to sit down and that spiritual laziness they just say that's why we love the prophetic so much not necessarily because we appreciate it that is from god it looks like an easy remedy and an alternative to sitting down and knowing god so we love it just tell me this business trip will i make it or not i don't want to hear any story though i don't need to learn how to talk to the people it's not, i just tell me just tell me this lady i'm going to marry is my morning clear is my afternoon clear is my evening clear or whatever it is but sir there are principles to work with women i don't care just tell me god should be able to know our refusal to get knowledge has equated to the strength of satan in our lives he looks mighty because our ignorance gave him the ladder to climb that high are you hearing what i'm saying let me say it again that satan looks mighty in our lives because our ignorance provided the ladder for him to climb and look so mighty but when you get knowledge brothers and sisters in my little life i've seen the power of knowledge when knowledge is correct and it is applied to the letter that's when you will see how cheap satan is savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to say he is mighty to say forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave savior is mighty to say he is mighty to say forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave once upon a time i'm looking for him where is he doctor come i thought he was there do you know once upon a time this gentleman was a naive young gentleman with a desire to become the future of himself is that true he saw an expectation but he was a naive gentleman and all that happened to him in the medical school they didn't change his cloth they didn't change his name they only kept supplying knowledge when the knowledge was enough they took him higher enough they took him higher enough they took him higher one day someone who was a master in that field looked at him and said based on the knowledge you have you deserve a certification to go and practice as a doctor the difference as anointed as i am the difference between me and this guy if someone is convulsing i will pray for him 
because I don't know what else to do. Is that true? All I know in my world is that all wickedness and evil is from Satan. And so that's exactly what I'll do. Because that's my knowledge. And I will watch somebody who is sick, having typhoid fever, and I'm shaking around, and here comes. He already knows that this one, if it can be attended to, it does not kill. So while the mother, he says, hey, help my son. The doctor says, all right. Knowledge gives you stability. Stability. Fear is a revelation that there is a gap in knowledge. Panicking over everything. You just hear something on your zing. Hey, they are here again, just like they said, because there's something you do not know. Are we together now? Yes. You can see him stand. And while he's performing whatever he's doing, his whole medical activity, someone else is there watching and, and panicking. And he says, Don't worry. And two days, he just prescribes a drug. Oh, are you doing this? Are you coughing? Are you vomiting? Oh, I see. And the person says, Help me. Oh. And the person goes to bed and wakes up the next day as if it's a lie and says, Doctor, I'm fine. Knowledge. Knowledge. Is that true? That means there is something you can know that will make you go to bed and wake up the next day in shock and surprise. There's something you can know about favor. The, the, I believe that all of these miracle alerts and all of this, they are, they are a statement. I told you that a sign is a miracle with a message in it. God is saying, this is how easy I can change your life if you believe me. You see the people coming to testify, they are even shy. They are surprised themselves. Because it's no respecter of persons. Are we together? Tonight we are going to pray. And I'm going to pray for the sick very fast. Very fast. We can't continue like this. Tomorrow we may not. It's a miracle service. But I don't know if we'll have time to pray for the sick. Because tomorrow God is going to tear the heavens over this place. Aye. Hallelujah. The anointing oil is already... I mean, they carried it out. When I saw the jar coming, I said, please come. <laughs> oh, come, oh, come. Together we will we'll cry and speak every kind of mystery. In it. <laughs> ah! When the woman was saying, there is nothing in my house, the anointing was hearing the conversation and said, so you are ignoring me. You gathered me among non-living things and said, you don't have anything. He said, change the vessel and see what I can do. The anointing was hearing the conversation. Are you not told that you have an anointing that can teach in english when things move huh? when things move uh, living things biology everything you said you, you personify things by giving them life and attributes of humans the oil is a dead thing it is the anointing that makes the oil alive the anointing makes anything alive including a rod that was dead are we together so tonight we are going to pray listen to me let me just give you one truth sit down please just one can i talk about sickness for just five minutes look at me what is it with satan and sickness and diseases please listen i know that there may be a number of people sick now trusting god for healing what if I go to the hospital right now don't feel bad not talking against you that's why the power of God is here if they look at me now and doctor diagnoses me and say young man I just found out that there is a heart palpitation or there is a hole in your heart or there is a tumor in your brain correct or there is a fibroid somewhere some kind of malignant growth blocking your tubes or whatever what exactly is satan achieving with this what is it with satan and the bodies of men what is he looking for i will tell you if you don't know this you will not see the need for the healing ministry the healing ministry is not just a validation that a man is anointed there are many other ways to validate that a man is anointed jesus was very ruthless about healing the healing ministry is not just some showmanship of testimony to show that a man is a good evangelist or apostle or prophet or whatever no you see remember our our teaching on the the serpent the seed right the serpent and the woman that satan knows that there is a law 
right is called the law of territory that you can only be allowed to stay in a territory if you have the requisite demands of that territory i give you an instance if i throw you inside water now you may be able to swim but not forever because that is not your habitation of existence so your design was not made that way but if i throw a fish a fish can stay there forever a man can fly in the air but not indefinite he has to come down even if the plane does not spoil something will happen to his health that pressure gradient will affect him eventually are we together now so we now see that on earth as a human being god's system for functioning on earth is that your spirit must have a body that was built before it becomes legal are we together so if there is no body your spirit is an illegal occupant it may not be legal in the realm of the spirit and in other dimensions of the heavens but on the earth your body your spirit must be hosted in a material body god himself respected this law when he was about to come to the earth a body has thou prepared for me not a spirit the spirit is still the real me but a body had to be prepared are we together now and so christ could come into that body mary's womb did not produce the word of god mary's womb produced a coat a physical body children are inherited from the lord but they need a body is that true they need a body so here's what satan knows that for as long as there are many bodies it means that there are many spirits that can be hosted in those bodies that have wills and can choose to serve god and can choose to advance the kingdom are you seeing the conspiracy of darkness in trying to create the system of clothing and the rest as wonderful as they are eventually they are antichrist systems in an attempt to to clone different bodies so that these demons remember the demons we have been talking about i hope you know those demons are still looking for bodies till today so they are coming up with a system to make robots and educate the robots to be so intelligent but without spirit so that a demon spirit can come into it there are films like that you watch them where scientists try to make all kinds of robots then they invoke through a central machine a spirit is not acting that's satan's agenda but meanwhile there is a level of health that your body must assume for your spirit to safely stay there you know your body is a house god said it is a temple demon said it is a house so we know that both god and satan agree that this body is a house are we together now and so satan tries to inflict all kinds of damages there is a damage that can happen to my body it will break the body so much the spirit will be will have to leave we call that death a separation are we together every sickness is the first step towards death every if i am sick i am closer to death being sick than i am alive so the ultimate goal of sickness is not to bring you down so you'll be fine tomorrow the ultimate goal of sickness is to start initiating the process of death in your life in hope that it will continue that's why doctors are a real blessing those who work in the anointing hate doctors we love doctors here we have a lot of them because we realize that it would take more than a man of god this damage that has been done by hell will require people who keep standing because even the doctors themselves believe in miracles they don't talk to the drugs they just administer it the drug itself the system of its operation is a mystery that only god can tell so medicine itself is a miracle if you go to the hospital you attended a miracle service because something in that hospital is beyond the knowledge of the doctor are we together so satan wants to afflict me imagine that i came up now and i'm coughing i'm coughing blood think of what it would do to your faith one two think of what it would do to the to kingdom advance are we together think of what it would do so satan wants it it's a statement god you are not you are not all that you say 
and I'm using your highest creation to mock you. The healing ministry proves the lordship of Jesus in a very significant way. The healing ministry does not just prove the strength of the man of God. It's a testament of the dominion power of God. Doctors understand this. The next time you are injecting somebody, don't just say, are you recovering? Expect something to flow through your contact with that syringe into the person that accelerates the process. So tonight, hear me. If there is any sickness in your body, it's a sign that Satan desires to kill you. It's not a sign that what he, he desires is proof. It is the first stage to begin to deteriorate you. There are people who are sick, but you go to the hospital and they tell you there is nothing wrong. That's Satan for you. A few days ago, a lady brought me, brought me um, a photo of someone. I think she's here. Just a little boil, Ejimi. Little boil on the leg. And within months, this had rot him. If, if they turn the other leg, you'll see the bones. Physical bones, the flesh had eaten. Is that a boil? Is that how you know that boils work? Another life attaching itself to your body. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy he says and nothing shall by any means hurt you how god anointed jesus of nazareth chapter 10 verse 38 with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good healing all they that were sick oppressed sickness is an oppression if you accommodated the devil will kill you with that sickness everywhere jesus saw sick people and they were serious enough about their healing think of what happened to the woman with the issue of blood imagine you were the one that married her and she was your wife 12 years of pain watching your wife every day and here comes jesus imagine the woman who had been bound for 18 years imagine what would happen to her family life the healing ministry is an end time ministry it's not for healing evangelists it's not for apostles it's part of the tools that make us demonstrators of the reality of the life and power of god the power of god must be demonstrated upon his highest creation not just plants and animals and tonight in the name of jesus christ i'm trusting the lord that there are people here who will wave goodbye do you know what God is going to do? God is going to turn your own body into a volcano and no devil, no spirit. The same way they leave deserts in peace. That's how they will have to walk out of your body in peace. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the reason king. See that in majesty. an exposition of your area of ignorance lord reveal to me what do i need to know what do i need to know to take me to the next dimension in the name of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere lift your voice and begin to pray
Expose my area of ignorance. 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 Hallelujah. I like you to prophesy to yourself and say every area of my life where Satan has taken advantage of me by the power of knowledge I declare that your victory in that area is broken. Lift your voice and pray. Every area may be your finances may be your spiritual life may be the area of growth may be ministry every area where Satan has taken Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Father. Open my eyes to the revelations required for the results I desire. Say it again, Father. Open my eyes to the revelation of the truths, the information that are required for the results that I desire. Open your mouth and pray. Every result has a demand. Every result has a light requirement. Every result I desire. There is something I must know. There is something I must do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the benefits, listen to me, of the word of God is that it can be sent on errand. He said he sent forth his word like a messenger. And he says his word he led them. Listen carefully. He sent forth his word. He sent it. He didn't speak it. He didn't say he spoke forth. He sent forth his word. I can be talking to you, but I can say, go and help me do something. He sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them from all their destruction. Please, let me tell you something. We are just going to pray one prayer and I'm going to pray for the sick. Demons are responsible for infirmities. 
don't confuse it are we together now there are families tied down with all kinds of plagues patterns father stroke mother stroke firstborn stroke first lady daughter stroke what kind of devil is that i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and tell the lord what must live your life this night the anointing to make it go is available. This Lord, this this my grave. Hallelujah. You must believe this. You are barren here tonight. You must be ready to take in now. You don't take in when you meet your husband. Meeting your husband gives the baby a body. You take it when the word of God gets to you. Be it unto me. Joseph was not there. Let's, let's agree with God for God's sake tonight and frustrate certain medical reports that only God, only God can take away. Are we together now? Lord, I'm ready to receive my healing. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now listen. My God, there is such an anointing. I'm going to pray. Just just flow, guys. Not that sound. Please change all those things. Play the strings for me. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to pray. You have I'm going to minister the healing power of Jesus to you. We may take some instant testimonies here. There's no time to call people out. We do that during the miracle services because we want to be thorough on everybody. But scattered across overflow, one, two, three, those online, wherever you are, the healing power of Jesus is able to touch you wherever you are. Are we together? Now I'm going to be praying for you. As I pray for you and the power of God touches you, there are some of you, you will be surprised at what will happen to you right now. While we finish praying, I'm going to give you an opportunity to check yourself. Now listen please, Osha's protocol, just coordinate so we don't have people roaming around. The moment you find out that the power of God has touched you, are we together? I want you to make your way to the front. Let there be people at, at different points, just stationed. And we'll have a way of receiving some of them here. Jimmy, you help me. And then we'll see how we can take a few testimonies to disgrace the devil tonight. We may not be able to take all. But tonight, we want to give room to the God that can step in and rubbish the works of Satan. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is very, very important. I want to pray for you now already people have been healed some of you as you came you found out don't be afraid i'm going to pray for you bring the lady that the angel of the lord is going to touch outside with a loud shout bring her just let me do my thing now i'm ministering by the spirit of prophecy i'm going to pray for the sick please let me have that lady quickly i want to pray for her it's a sign that god is giving to pray for the sick will you 
see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear I see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it name of Jesus Christ you see God does these things you know that this is a ministry of signs and wonders and God does these things as a message praise the Lord the Lord is setting this lady's family free I see oppression I command that spirit it's time to go let her go in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ and for you I take this that the devil has put in your stomach in the name of Jesus every planting that is not of the lord in the name of jesus it leaves now lay one hand where you are trusting god for healing quickly lay one hand where you are trusting god for healing if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest inside and outside please expect a miracle right now expect a miracle right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ my God in the name of Jesus Christ I take authority over the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus I command every devil of sickness every devil of sickness come out of their bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ every spirit of infirmity I take authority over you right now. I take authority over you right now. Every spirit of infirmity within this vicinity, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity in their lives by covenant, in their lives by disobedience, in their lives by ignorance, I take authority over you right now. Right now I declare be healed in the name of Jesus. I send the healing power of Jesus like a drug into your body. I command cleansing right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing right now in the name of Jesus. I command healing in the name of Jesus. Something is happening to you. A chest condition is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus, several chest conditions. As a matter of fact, right now, something is leaving your chest. You will feel like fire just going like this and you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ I see an eye condition the Lord is healing an eye condition in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing someone with a tooth problem you have your molars like severe pain I don't know if it's like hole in the teeth right now that hole closes now in the name of Jesus I close that hole now in the name of Jesus Christ lower abdominal pain i'm seeing several ladies with lower abdominal pain i'm seeing like fire leaving me to all of those ladies in the name of jesus lower abdominal pain be healed right now be healed right now i'm seeing a lady right from the last three like three weeks you have been bleeding severely whether you're on your menstrual cycle or not severe bleeding right now the power of god is coming upon you coming upon you now coming upon you now and is living completely in the name of jesus christ there is someone you don't hear well with your right ear you don't hear well with your right ear all of a sudden it opens now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ pile there are at least three people i'm seeing with pile I command in the name of Jesus that devil be healed be, be, let them go right now and pile be healed in Jesus name 
Now, there is a lady, don't be embarrassed. I'm seeing you are not a nursing mother. Yet, there are discharges on your breast. This is something that is, 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 a, is, is an embarrassing thing the devil has used to mock you. The power of God is coming on that lady right now. And there is complete healing. Complete healing. I'm seeing someone with a growth in your neck. Just somewhere here. After the prayer, you will check it and you will not see that growth again. It disappears and leaves. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there's anyone in this place on a crutch or on a wheelchair, when I finish praying, throw that cross and stand up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I decree and declare if there's anyone having any kind of walking aid, the moment I finish praying, throw it and stand up. In the name of Jesus, every pain on your limbs, anyone with pain on your limbs, I command healing right now. Peptic ulcer be healed right now. Peptic ulcer be healed right now. All forms of hepatitis, be healed right now be healed right now SSAS be healed right now be healed right now if there is anyone here with any growth in your body the devil has planted any lump on your breast your body or any part of your your system in the name of Jesus I command that growth to disappear right now I command that go to disappear right now in the name of Jesus there's there's somebody you have I don't know what problem you have with your nose the Lord is showing me this is something that has affected your ability to smell it has affected your ability to smell after the prayer you will be surprised everything just leaves right now in Jesus name I'm seeing someone with a pain just right here at the arm in the name of Jesus Christ I command that pain to leave right now. I command that pain to leave right now. I command that pain to leave right now. Now, don't be embarrassed. I'm seeing someone, there is like a severe boil around your private area. And this boil has an unusual pain. You have treated it again and again and again. And it will not go. In the name of Jesus, I command healing for you right now. I command healing for you right now. I command healing for you right now. Someone had a dream and in the dream they used an object and they hit you with it physically. When you got up this side, madam, you are the one I'm talking about. You, come. Let me talk to you. Because immediately I spoke, the Lord told me this is a woman. Come. Do I know you, madam? You had a dream. Is that true? Hit you with yes at that time i was pregnant they hit me with something like spear like a spear yes and sir. from that time you've been having that pain yes, till now sir. even the son i gave back to he came out with that pain he came out with that pain too yes madam you came here for koinonia this is where all things are possible all not some all things are possible hold my hands in the name of jesus i bring an end to this oppression in the name of Jesus, let that devil leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm still praying. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm seeing um, there is somebody just right here at, at, at this, this point of my leg. There is severe pain, like muscle pull. Sometimes it holds on you and you cannot even move. The Lord is setting you free right now. There is somebody, your eyes, when you look physically, it looks like they are putting a rod in front of you like a, a, a little object coming out of you are looking but it's like your eyes one of it is beginning to close and it looks like there is a rod or something like that on your eyes this is what i'm seeing i command that eye to be open right now now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus be healed overflow one be healed overflow two be healed Overflow 3 be healed. Our family online be healed. And in the main auditorium here be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to check yourself now in the next two minutes. Many of you will be surprised to see what has happened. The moment you see that the hand of God has touched you, make your way quickly and come and line up here. Lord, you reign and you rule over all. Celebrate Jesus. 
Unto you we ascribe all the praise. Keep coming. Lord, you reign and you rule over all. Unto you we ascribe all the praise. Lion of Judah, reign. 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 Please direct them to come very fast. Jesus a big 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 clap. Hallelujah. Hold on. Please. You should join the queue so that we can hurry up quickly. Your name, your testimony, just bring them here quickly so that okay, go ahead. Um, my name is Joy. I'm can we have them up here? Is it possible? Will it take time? Okay, quickly. Just a few minutes. Okay, my name is Joy. I've been having this toothache for months and toothache. Yes, sir. And then when you mentioned the toothache, as in it gives me headache, and then that moment I could not feel the headache completely. completely it's gone right now any pain around your tooth in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord yes please praise God my name is please quickly. I've been healed I've been yes someone be confirming Oscar. that maybe Benga from Pastor the Alpha. four years tonight yes. I received my healing and I stood here for my mom she's having fibroid I believe she's healed tonight in, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ it never returns to you by the power of the Holy Ghost yes please quickly <laughs> Mama Mutafia, walk any pain any pain give Jesus praise look at this look at this could not work well and the Lord is healing her in the name of Jesus perfection perfection of that that area in Jesus name quickly miracles miracles the Lord is doing great miracles that's a sign that everything that has not been corrected in your life tonight my God is correcting it in the name of Jesus hallelujah destiny changer you are the destiny changer will you come and change my destiny my destiny today over your life is broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you, yes please Apostle, this is partial blindness healed by the hand of the Lord tonight, what happened to him? Uh, last year I had a problem with this uh, your serious eye. pain Okay. and then I went to the hospital eye center in Kaduna the doctor confirmed that I can no longer see with this eye oh, you went to eye center in Kaduna yes. and the doctors confirmed that you will not be able to use the eye to see again. Yes. What happened tonight? As the prayer was going on. The eyes open. I, yes. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Close the one you can see with. Close the one you could see with before. Follow me. Just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Are you seeing? Just follow me. Be careful. Can you see me? Follow me. Look at. Completely blind. Could not see with this one. Follow me. If you can see me, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, sir, I prophesy to you that not this is a sign that every other thing that has been closed in your life, my God is opening it right now. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. Go ahead, yes, please. For ever a month, I can't see with these eyes. You can't see very well yes, with these eyes. Yes, then the eyes will be closing and be growing small. My I God. went to Shika, they give me drugs, my HOD prays. Sometimes I cannot even open my eyes. Sometimes if I'm opening water, then when the apostle was like saying, the Lord is turning to somebody's right eye. And instantly if I close my eyes and teaching me, the ease just stop. I really want to bless Completely. the name of the Lord. That devil leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Call down from overflow three. Oh, the lady from overflow three. Your mother, did you call her? You called her. What happened? She's in my healing. Look at this. Where is she? Where's your mother? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. And then what happened? As in, she has pipe problem. We are going to see Oh, she has pipe. Yeah, we are going to see this hospital. They say there's, there's nothing wrong with her. She's completely well. And she used, her blood, blood used to flow every day. Every My day. God, look at this. And you call her right now. She's really completely <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ, the God who can leave Zaria to Kano to heal a woman. May he go to everyone's family and bring supernatural healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, yes, please. Praise God. Sometimes last year, December, I slept one night and I woke up around past one and I was not able to sleep. Because I was having issues with my hair. My hair was my hair started paining me. Then I slept up the following morning. I woke up and my hair started falling off. I couldn't control it. I went to the saloon to make to retouch it and stretch to see. Even at that point, the hair all just went. I had to just cut my hair. And after cutting my hair, my mom prayed because I could I refused to tell her concerning the dream that I had. Because if I should tell her, she would start panicking. So after that, I prayed and I anointed my hair. And after since then, my hair has become stronger and normal. Can you imagine? This is the hair. The hair is falling off. Every devil, in the name of Jesus, the hair of a woman is her glory. I command restoration for your hair. In she Jesus. has had hair problem for some days now. Hair problem? Yes, Which sir. of the hair? My right ear. I've what? been having severe pain. and Severe pain? Yes, and yesterday it shot completely. It shot completely. Yes. And right now it's right open. Right now it's open. And Put your no hand. Pain, no Put pain. your hand here. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! My name is Patricia Daladi. Apostle made mention of the you have problem with your one of the sense organs. I was the one the nose. I couldn't smell. Yeah, you, you said could, could not smell. You couldn't smell. How long? For 13 years now. For how long? 13 years. 13 years. Look she at, couldn't smell. Look at this. And right now. There's perfume on my hands. Can you smell? Look at this. You can smell this now. Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. Hey. My trust is in you. I am that I am. My trust is in you. Ladies and gentlemen, this lady could not smell. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Breathe in. Breathe in. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, I release the life and the power of God to your body. It's over forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Go ahead. Very unusual menstrual pain for 10 years. For 10 years. Let me tell you this. We have to pray for our sisters over this demonic thing because it's getting popular and many of our sisters are even believing that's how it will be. It's a wicked spirit. Don't believe it. It is the devil of darkness. And in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice that this has been your experience, I pray by the power of the God I serve that from tonight, that experience lives your life forever. When the pain comes, it will paralyze her legs. She won't be able to move. And she had she came here with that same pain. You came here with that same pain. Yes, and right now, what happened to you? I'm okay, I can completely yes, free, yes, free forever. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
she was bathing Christmas day of 2015 water entered her ear and she has not been able to hear well since then but as you prayed her ear popped open that's how you know it's the devil well. that's how you know it's the devil that you're bathing and water enters your ear and then that's the end of it and i've been suffering from typhoid for the past eight years i came here very weak but now i'm for the past what typhoid for eight years she came very weak but now she's strong you didn't go to the hospital i've been going it comes and goes it comes and goes name of Jesus Christ let there be perfection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I speak to your ears perfection in the name of Jesus go ahead sir um, this woman had a dream in December and then she saw uh, somebody in her dream and they told her this is facial cancer and she this is what facial cancer cancer of the face. of the face is there something like that ah. and then she woke up and began to feel the symptoms Oh, and the pains of the person she saw in the dream physically physically right now all the pain gone anyone that appeared to anyone in the dream and planted anything in your body tonight may it go back to that devil in the name of jesus may it go back to that devil in the name of jesus may it go back to that devil in the name of jesus go ahead Okay, lift your hands now, I'll pray for you. That's why I took out time to explain this to you. In the name of Jesus, I command the hand of God to come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every force of sickness in your body, every force of infirmity over your body, it lives now and forever in the name of Jesus. The strength to push through tonight and pray in the night until tomorrow in the afternoon when we will be breaking i release that strength to you right now in the name of jesus many of you will have dreams tonight and in those dreams you will see strange victories and you will get up in the morning with a physical manifestation of those victories in the name of jesus christ i release those dreams in the realm of the spirit i command that they are captured in your experience tonight in the name of Jesus Christ again I decree and declare a strange grace for favor that between tonight and tomorrow as you come let there be strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let's share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen